Hey everyone, welcome to week 63. Today is Monday. This is our first day on our new week, which we're going to title, What Should I Paint? You guys helped us out by sending us a ton of suggestions. And for today, we're going to paint... Brrr, drum roll. Brrr. Okay, let's get started. This is Monday. This is the first day of our new week that we're going to title, What Should I Paint? And like I told you guys at the end of Friday's video, last week's final video, this week is going to be about you guys. I mean, this whole project, we wouldn't have been able to do it without your support. But this week specifically, we asked you guys for help. And we just made a very simple question. What should we paint? And you guys were very, very generous. We received like hundreds of answers. And what we did was something very simple. We took our phone and we started blindly scrolling on our phone and wherever Danny's finger landed, I was going to paint that. That's what we did for today. And by the way, we're not going to curate this. The only reason we would say no to something is if it was disrespectful. That's the only reason we would have opted to not paint something uh, for today. So as long as it's respectful... It doesn't matter how weird it is, we're going to try and paint it. Now, I was speaking about this a little bit at the end of last Friday's video. Why are we doing this? What's the point in surrendering control and telling somebody, okay, you tell me what to paint. You know, I'm going to be subjected to what you tell me. I think you guys have heard me before state something that seems quite definitive. And I know it's a little more nuanced than what I make it out to be. But what I say is that subject matter doesn't matter. The subject of your painting does not matter. Now, I think I'm being very blunt about this because I kind of expect everyone to understand that, yes, of course it matters. I mean, what you paint is always going to matter. The object of your painting is going to dictate how that image is being perceived. So, of course it matters. And perhaps what I try to say is that there's something bigger, I feel, always beyond the mere subject matter. I think subject matters are often excuses to speak about something else. There's obviously paintings that want to deal with very, very specific subject matter. For example, the painting of Raft of the Medusa. It may be a painting about life and death. It may be a painting about our humanity. It may be a painting about corruption. But in essence, it is a painting about a shipwreck. Jericho used that shipwreck to speak about those things. But it is a painting of that shipwreck. If it wasn't for that shipwreck, that painting would not be. So we're not dismissing the inherent strength, the power that a subject matter can have. But what I'm trying to get at is that we should never expect the subject matter to do the heavy lifting in our painting. It's not enough for us to fall back and rely upon the inherent power, the inherent strength that that subject matter alone garners because what's the point of painting it then? Why translate it into painting? Why make a reflection about it through painting if you're not going to say anything else except what it already is? And that's where I see that the act of painting, you know, the reason for painting it has to be so powerful that in my mind, it eclipses what the subject matter is doing. Because if it was just about the subject matter, then it doesn't need to be a painting. It could be a photograph of that subject matter. It could be a video still. It could be a video. Its relevance wouldn't really rely upon it being a painting. So why does painting matter when we paint something? And I guess this is at the core of what I'm trying to get to because it is a choice. Remember, it is always a choice. When we sit down and paint or when we stand back and look at our easel and decide to paint, it is a choice. That is a decision we've made. We have, out of the myriad of choices, to say things, to express things that we have at our disposal, we have chosen painting. And there has to be a reason why we chose painting. It can't just be that, well, I like to paint, so I'm going to just paint something. No, there has to be something far more profound to that decision. We may not be aware of it at first. I think that that's totally comprehensible. I think that 
it is part of painting that we spend a long time trying to decipher why we paint, to understand why painting has chosen us or we have chosen painting. But what we should never do is just kind of sit back and relax and say, this subject matter is so good by itself that I don't really have to do much. I just kind of have to paint it and that's it. The subject matter will carry this painting and will be strong enough by itself. Will it work? Maybe. If it's a very strong image, again, image meaning that it works beyond the fact that it's a painting. So if it's a very strong image, for sure you're gonna be able to tap into the strength that lies at the heart of image making. But I think you're gonna be painting yourself into a corner because as soon as those powerful, very powerful images dry up, and they are gonna dry up because powerful images, they don't come a plenty. It's not like you're constantly bombarded with amazing images. I mean, think of photographers. They have to shoot hundreds, thousands of photographs to then narrow it to a handful of images. And only out of that handful of images, one of them is going to become the quintessential image of what they were trying to say. That would be the time cover, the National Geographic cover. So powerful images are not easy to get to. But what we can do consistently is believe that the act of painting in itself can be incredibly powerful too. And if we understand why it is powerful under our hands, and those reasons can be as varied as there are human beings out there, so that's what's amazing about painting. If we understand that, then we can kind of convince ourselves that what we paint doesn't matter, that our subject of painting can be anything, and that we can express ourselves through anything. And I think that that's what I'm trying to say. Now, again, because I'm trying to push a point, that's why I'm summarizing all of this and saying subject matter doesn't matter. So last week I was saying, we're not going to try to prove anything here. Like if I fail miserably at it, if you guys give me five options and I give back to you five horrible paintings, then I'll still believe it is my fault. It's not because it can't be done. It's just that I wasn't up for the task. But I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to try to be. So for this first one, and I guess, you know, now that the painting has taken some shape, you guys are probably chuckling. For the first one, Danny randomly picked Rubber Ducky. Rubber Ducky. So immediately I was like, okay, I think I could do a Rubber Ducky painting. And even Danny was kind enough to tell me, okay, we can buy a Rubber Ducky through the internet and they'll ship it today. We'll get it this afternoon and you could set something up and you can paint it. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to be that specific. Because if that's the first painting I was going to do, and my initial response was just to say, okay, let's buy it. We don't have a rubber ducky here. If my kids were smaller, I'm, I'm trying to think back. I think Samu probably had a rubber ducky, but I don't have rubber duckies anymore. So maybe the story would have been different if I had one stashed somewhere. <laughs> But I don't. And I just didn't want to set the precedent thinking that the way around this exercise was buying whatever you guys suggested. So we talked with Danny and I was like, no, I got to try and do something a little bit different. And besides, besides, Rubber Ducky immediately, immediately referred me to Irene Cuadrado's painting of a tub full of Rubber Duckies. Irene Cuadrado is, in my humble opinion, I think she's the best painter, best naturalist, realist painter in Spain today. Like I've said before, I'm not going to count Antonio Lopez because Antonio Lopez, he already belongs to the greatest pantheon of painters. He's incredible. You know, if we take him out of the equation, which we should, which we should, I think Irene Cuadrado today is the best painter in Spain. I have no doubt in my mind. I think she's absolutely remarkable. I've seen her paint firsthand. And she blew my mind. She is bold, expressive. She's subtle. One of the most incredible, talented painters I've ever seen in my life. She's a powerhouse of a painter. I mean, really, really, really strong painter. I was very, very lucky to have seen her paint because she really is quite remarkable. So my mind went to that rubber ducky painting of Irene. And I was like, I can't do that. Like... <laughs> That's too much. That occupies way too much space in my brain. I can't do that. I've seen what a rubber ducky painting on steroids would look like. 
And I was like, okay, I can't compete with that. If I try to do something, you know, even remotely close to anything like that, I'm going to fail miserably. So what can I paint? Because you guys give me the starting point, but then it is up to me to say, okay, that's the condition that I have to satisfy. Now, how would I paint this? And it's going to sound childish, but as soon, as soon as I thought of Rubber Ducky, I thought of Ernie in the tub and the song. Rubber Ducky. <laughs> that was so bad. I'm not going to keep going. I thought I had the courage to do the whole song. I'm not going to put you guys through that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, that's where my mind went. And I was like, yeah, this is part of my childhood. This song is definitely part of my childhood. So I think I have to paint this. If you say rubber ducky, that's where my mind goes. And then I thought, well, that's ridiculous. You know, what are you going to paint? Ernie taking a bath and singing to a rubber ducky? Come on. And then I thought, why not? <laughs> why not? I mean, last week, and I thought this was a very nice, you know, way to tie this particular painting to last week. Last week, we spoke about the things that made me, me. And I have no shame in saying that Sesame Street, oh my God, Sesame Street in my house, it was huge. It was humongous. I loved Sesame Street. We loved it in our house. Again, my parents brought with them a ton of Sesame Street children's books. I adored them. I loved them. And they also brought like, you know, super old kind of vintage plush toys. So I remember we had Bert and Ernie plush toys. We also had like the Fisher Price, Bert and Ernie little set. We also had these puppets, these Muppet puppets. <laughs> and I remember eventually the Ernie one just kind of fell apart and we only had its head. I mean, it was really beat up. It was really mangled. It was, it looked terrible. It had seen better days, but we even had those things and I loved them. I loved Bert and Ernie, loved them, loved them to bits. So why not? Why not do a tiny little homage to Jim Henson? Jim Henson was a huge part of me growing up. Still, one of the most fascinating movies I've ever seen in my life has to be The Dark Crystal, has to be. And I saw it 30, you know, whatever years ago, and I've never seen it again because I don't want to ruin it. In my mind, it still is one of the most magical movies I've ever seen. I still have this memory of these lanky things, these lanky creatures with long legs. Oh my God, they horrified me. And at the same time, I was mesmerized by them. I was like, these creatures are so amazing. I I'm not sure what they're called. Let me check. Land striders. That's what they were called. My God, look at these things. They're incredible. I remember watching these things when I was little. I was thinking like, what are these creatures? It's so amazing. Yeah, so Jim Henson is, is part of my life for sure. I mean, Sesame Street, The Muppets, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth. Oh my God, come on. If you were a kid in the 80s, that's half your childhood. <laughs> in that sense, maybe it's not that stupid to paint Ernie in the tub with a rubber ducky. <laughs> and I told myself, just paint it. It has to be a painting. It has to be a painting about something and it doesn't have to try and be something else. You don't have to work so hard to try and make it be something more than what it is. Sometimes paintings are amazing for what they are. They can be very, very simple. They can be done very lovingly and that's about it. So I think for today's painting, I was like, okay, let's acknowledge the fact that these characters were a huge part of my life. And what I did was I just YouTubed the video. I watched it, almost tears coming down my eyes because come on, who doesn't like that Rubber Ducky song? It's amazing. So I paused the video, I took some screenshots and I was like, let's just paint this. Let's just have fun with this. I don't have to try and make it super colorful. I don't have to try and make it, you know, different from what my painting is. Let me have this painting experience that I can only consider it as my own. And while I'm painting, let me reflect upon that moment of my life. I remember when my kids were small, probably more so with Samu than with Fer. Because, you know, with your firstborn, you try, you really try, you put 100%. With your second kid, like 65%, 65 at most. I mean, on my best days, 68%. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so with Samu, all the cool children's books, all the really good educational shows, he was watching stuff in Spanish and English just so that he could train his English. With my daughter, I don't know. I just gave her the remote. I was like, you know what? If you see a lot of blood, just change the channel. <laughs> and I remember being super conscious of what my kids should watch, you know, what was age appropriate when Samu was little. With Fer, I think she was like three, four years old, and I showed her Coraline. Oh my God, she's still horrified. She is still horrified of Coraline. So yeah, that's on me. I remember idiot me just thinking, come on, it's stop motion, it's beautiful. But again, when it was Samu, you know, all the uh, Christmas Rudolph stop motion movies that are amazing. I showed him those. Those are beautiful. I mean, those are kind of dark in their own way, but those are so nice. They could tear you apart, though. You know, in fact, I think they're probably even worse. I think Coraline is actually better. Coraline, what? It just horrifies you. I mean, you'll eventually get over it. But I still remember, and this wasn't stop motion, but I still remember Frosty the Snowman. Oh, my God. I still remember when he melts. That is etched in my brain. I don't care if he resurrects. He melted. He died. I mean, Jesus resurrected, but people still remember him dying. My mother doesn't have on her wall just a picture of Jesus resurrected. No, she has a crucifix. I remember when he melted away and everyone cried and I cried. So maybe Coraline was the way to go. Yeah, I'm going to double down on that. We're going to do a Saw marathon. She's nine now. Come on, that's old enough. Anyways, that's what this week is going to be about. You guys pick the subject matter, and I'm going to try to find a way to make it my own. I'm probably going to have to jump through hoops to try and make it my own. That's the game. You know, you guys put the starting conditions, and I'll try to take that painting to the finish line. And we'll see how we do. But, you know, for today's painting, that first painting, acknowledging that it can just be a painting of Ernie and a rubber ducky, I think that's a beautiful thing. If I can enjoy doing a painting of Ernie and a rubber ducky in a bathtub, then I can teach myself how to enjoy just about anything in life. That's going to be it for today. It was a pretty good ride. I mean, we talked about Ernie, Jim Henson, Dark Crystal, Coraline, and we're doing a saw marathon tonight. That's a pretty good day. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, remember, tomorrow's Spanish Tuesday, Martes de Español. Brush upon your Spanish. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you all. Bye.